Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. I'm going to demonstrate how to make this cute fall owl pillow. Now the brown fabric that is the main part of the body is made out of Joann's home decor fabric. I picked it because it's a little thicker. You can use quilting fabric if you like or any other fabric. Now the eye area, the nose, and the chest area is all made out of craft felt. And then I have two black buttons up here. Now I'm going to show you one other version that you can do. On this version, the eyes are made out of what we call yo-yos. And these are real easy to make. And if you're going to make the yo-yos, you're going to need two 10-inch circles. Take a dinner plate and, and your fabric and trace around that dinner plate and that'll give you the circles. Now I'm not going to demonstrate how to make the yo-yos in this particular video, but I will have a link down below your YouTube screen. So you want to scroll down and look for that link. It'll say yo-yos. Real easy to make. It'll take you to that video so you know how to fix it or to make them. And then here I have two buttons white and then a smaller black button. Both are really easy to make. So now let's take a look at the supply list. You'll need the following supplies. For the front and back of the pillow and the wings, you're gonna need one half yard of, I'm using a dark brown fabric. You're also gonna need craft felt and you're gonna need five different colors. And at some of the Walmart stores that sell fabric and crafts, you can buy small sheets of craft felt. So if you've got a, a Walmart that carries craft supplies, then look there. Joann's also carries craft felt, and they also carry a little bit higher grade of felt, which is considerably more expensive. So if you have it in your budget and you want to buy the more expensive felt, you can. But otherwise, look for the craft felt. It's very inexpensive. Then you're going to need polyfill stuffing to put inside of the pillow, and then you'll need two 5 8 inch black buttons. Now, for the version of the pillow that has the yo-yo eyes, you're going to need two 1 and a quarter inch buttons and two 5 8 inch buttons. And for the fabric for the yo-yos, you'll need one third yard or buy two fat quarters. Just make sure that you can get a 10 inch diameter circle in it. I'm going to demonstrate how to draw the top part of the owl face. The eyes will go in the center here. And I'm also using circle templates that you can purchase at Joann Fabrics and Crafts. You can get them on Amazon and many other websites that sell sewing supplies. They are made by June Taylor and they go from one inch circles up to five inch circles. So to start, you want to draw a 5 inch by 9 inch rectangle. And you're going to take your circle templates and place one to one side to where they touch the bottom, the top, and the side. And then you just draw around the circle. Then you move it over and do the same thing. Make sure it's touching the top, bottom, and this side. Draw around it. Where they intersect in here, you, you want to ignore that. So you would just want to exit out. And you're going to cut on the outside curved lines. And when you are done, and by the way, when I draw my templates, I put them onto thin cardstock or use any cardboard you have around your home. It's much easier to use these when you want to trace your design on your fabric. And I'm cutting these out on felt, and when you're done, this is what your piece should look like. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to draw the chest area. And I'm going to be using a 3-inch circle template from the June Taylor set of templates. First, draw a rectangle 
four inch by nine inch and then draw a line down the center which would be at four and a half inches. Take your very first, uh, to draw your first center line, take the dashed line in your circle template and place it right on that center line and you only need to draw from about halfway up on one side, halfway up over to the other side. Then take the template off to one side and make sure it's touching the side and bottom and draw around it halfway. Then move it over to this side and repeat and draw around it. Make sure it's touching the side and the bottom. When you're done, cut your template out and then you're going to cut three pieces and mine are done on three different colors of felt. So you can use any colors that you like. To make the eyeballs, use the two inch diameter circle template and cut two pieces in felt out of the white felt. Then for the nose, draw a rectangle that's one and a quarter inches by one and a half and put a little mark down here at the 5 8 inch mark, that is the center, and then with a ruler, place it at this corner, down to the center, and cut it off on both sides, and there you have your nose. To draw the wings, you want to draw a rectangle that is 4 inches by 6 inches, and I'm using the 4 inch circle template. Place your template at the bottom, to where it touches the bottom and both sides. And also before you place this template down there, you want to go down two inches from the top or four inches from the bottom. Go in one inch this way and put a little mark. Then draw around the template from this side up to the one inch. Then take a ruler, place it from that one inch mark up to this top corner and finish drawing your line. And when you're done, you're going to have a template that looks like this. Then take your fabric and you want it, you're going to be cutting out four pieces all together. So bring your fabric front sides together, lay it on there, and cut it out. And then you're going to go and cut one more set. Then stitch one quarter inch from the bottom here around up to this top corner. Do not stitch here. You want to leave this open. After you've stitched it together, then around this curved bottom edge, you want to go in and cut little slits. Do not cut into the stitch line, so cut all the way around here. Then open it up and turn it front side out. This is polyfill stuffing. You want to take some out of your bag that you're using it from, and you don't need a lot. You don't want to overstuff your wings. You're putting just enough in just to give it a little bit of shape. First, break it up into smaller pieces, and then insert it in and push it evenly throughout. Now, this is not overstuffed at all. You want to put just a little bit in. So you do that to both wings. Now I'm going to show you how to draw the shape at the top of the head. And it's a very easy uh, pattern to draw. You want to first start out with a 12 and a half inch wide rectangle. And you'd only need it a few inches deep. It doesn't need to be very deep at all. And what you're going to do is you're going to put a mark here at the half inch and put a mark here at the half inch. Then in the very center, which will be at six and a quarter inches, this is your center, go down one inch and put a little mark, and then on here and here, going down one and a half inch from this line, put another mark. And you're just going to take 
do this in pencil and just lightly kind of feather it in, sketching a curved area that looks like this. And use a pencil so if you need to erase and fix, it's easy to do. And mark on your pattern piece that you're going to draw a quarter of an inch stitch line up here on your fabric when we get to that. When you cut your template out, this is what it's going to look like. Here's how you cut out the main body of the pillow. Have your 12 and a half inch pieces by 14 and a half inches. You'll need two for the body and bring them front sides together. Take your template for the top of the head and place it all the way up at the very top edge of your fabric. And then take a pencil or a marking pin and trace around it. Then at the very bottom edge, take one of your circle templates. Go down there and trace around the two bottom edge corners. Then cut on your drawn lines. On this demonstration, I'm going to demonstrate how to use just felt. If you'll notice, the eye area here is felt. And this is the easiest one to do. It has the fewest steps. But if you like the yo-yo eyes, which I'm going to show you again, these are the yo-yo eyes. I'm going to refer you to a video that will tell you how to make these. It's really easy. You're going to need to cut two 10-inch diameter circles. And my dinner plates were 10 inches, so just go to your kitchen and use a dinner plate. And then you'll need not only a black for the eyeballs, but you're going to need two large white buttons. And when you put these on, you sew the white one on first, and then you go through the holes of the white button up through the holes of the dark button. And that's how you put it on. So this is real, real easy. Otherwise, everything is the same on the rest of the pillow. So you want to lay it out and get it all centered. So you want to leave, oh, I'm going to say that this is probably an inch and a half from the bottom is the first piece of the chest area. And then just evenly space these. When you go to put this piece on, you want to make sure that the edge here of this covers up this top part here so that they can't see it at all. And then your nose overlaps these two pieces right there. And then, of course, just center your eyes any way you want to do it. If you want to make it a crazy owl where it's cross-sided or however you want to do it, you, you put your personality into it. So then what you want to do is just remove these, set them aside, and then pin it down so that it doesn't shift when you stitch. So place pins all around it on all of your scalloped points. And then you're going to stitch one quarter inch from the edge. Excuse me, you're going to stitch one eighth inch from the edge. So stitch on all of the edges all the way around. And I recommend that you use matching thread. Then when you're done with that one, go ahead Place the next one on top, pin it down, get it all on there, take your time, pin them down, and then repeat using matching thread, stitch around all of the edges. Then go to your next piece, do the same thing. One eighth of an inch from the edge, stitch it all down. Then take your part of the main part of the face, overlap it, and stitch around these edges one eighth of an inch in. Then take your part, first part of the eyes, the white part of the eyes, get them centered, stitch 
1 8 of an inch around the edges. Then the last part to stitch on is the nose and stitch it on. Then after you've stitched all these pieces on, then with a needle and thread, hand stitch your eyes on. Or if you have a button attachment, you can stitch your buttons on with your sewing machine. Well, this is what it looks like when you've got all of these pieces sewn out. Now, my nose is a little crooked, but that adds a little uh, personality to it. So you can give personality to your owl. So now I'm going to show you how to put the wings on. Go ahead and pin your wings on with the bottom of the wing facing in towards the center of the pillow. This piece, this uh, end of this edge right along here is four inches from the bottom. So place a couple of pins to hold them, then just do a basting stitch, a machine basting stitch, close to the edge along here, just to hold it in place. Now take your other piece of fabric that's for the back of the pillow and bring front side down on top of this one. And go ahead and place pins around all of the edges. Because, and this, you're going you know, to find it a little challenging to pin it all together because of the wings, but if you mush it down, it'll be fine. So you're going to pin around all edges, but on the bottom edge, make sure you do this on the bottom edge, you're going to leave an opening that's big enough to get your hand through so you can put the rest of your polyfill stuffing in it. So I'm going to put two pins on this side of the opening and I'm going to start over here to stitch. You're going to do a one quarter inch seam around the entire pillow and make sure you do pin all of your edges down otherwise it will come out really bad. And then as you go around curves you want to lift up your press. If you don't have a, a machine that automatically where the presser foot comes up whenever you stop, it's, you want to stop, lift up your presser foot a little bit, do a couple of stitches, lift up the presser foot again and turn it. So you're going to need to lift that presser foot so you can slowly turn around your corners. If you have a sewing machine that does uh, lift up the presser foot when you stop. Make sure it's set at that setting to do so and it'll be a lot easier to get around your curved edges. Up here at your corners, at the top of the ears, you're going to stop stitching up here one quarter inch away from this top edge. Leave your needle down through there as you turn the pillow and then continue stitching your one quarter inch seam and that's how you'll get your nice pointed ears. Before you turn it front side out you need to clip a little bit of the fabric off at the point of the ears and then on all curved edges you need to cut little slits. So on your ears I like to cut it to where there's only about an eighth of an inch of fabric around the top part of the ear. I'll cut some off on one edge and then I'll go around to the other edge. If you have too much fabric up there, the ear points will be really, really stubby. It's still going to be hard to get them to look exactly pointed, but you don't want them too stubby. Then around all of your curved areas at the top and the two bottom corners, you want to go in and cut little slits. Do not cut into your stitch line. So go ahead and do that again at the top and the two bottom corners. Now open up down there at the bottom and begin to turn your pillow front side out. And take your time. Make sure you don't pull your stitches out at the bottom. Now you want to reach inside with something like this. This is it's not exactly a chopstick, but something that looks like this. And you're going to go inside and go up to your ears as soon as I can get it open. And begin to poke them out. Now make sure you don't poke so hard that you just 
push all your stitches out. You don't want to do that. As much as possible. Go to both ears. And now I'm going to show you a little trick I do to get them to come out even more. If you're having trouble getting them to come out as pointed as possible, take a straight pin and go in and just grab some of the fabric and begin to pull on it a little bit. Now it'll take some time to get it to come out, but it will come out a lot more if you do this. So if you're having problems, do this at each corner or at each pointed ear. I think the pillow looks better if uh, the wings are folding in just a little bit, not all the way down. But what I did was I went in with needle and thread and did a little tack stitch. Tacked it in about an inch from the edge on the side of the pillow so that it kind of comes inward just a little bit. Then you want to go to your opening here and take your polyfill stuffing and begin to fill the pillow in. Make sure you, again, pull your polyfill stuffing apart a little bit and then push the stuffing up towards the ears first. Fill in the ears and gradually fill the pillow in until you come all the way down. Your very last step is to close up your opening. So you want to fold those edges in one quarter inch. And I would kind of finger press those little edges so that it's, you have a nice little fold line. Then either pin or clip your edge, your opening closed. And then use something called a ladder stitch to close it up. If you don't know what a ladder stitch is, it's a hidden stitch, you can't see it. There's going to be a link down below your YouTube screen. So you're just going to kind of scroll down your screen. You'll see a little section where you will see links to different videos. So look for ladder stitch and it's very detailed and it's really an easy stitch to do and use that to close up your opening. Well, here it is. I think these pillows are so cute. And then here's the other one right here. So you can see the, the difference in the looks. I like both of them. This one has fewer steps. This one has a few more steps. And the buttons up here, these are I think either one to one and a quarter inch and then the little one is about a half inch. And then when you're doing the yo-yo on this one, make sure again that you place the yo-yos to where they cover up the top edge up here. So when you cut this top uh, chest piece out, you want to make it a little bit wider than the others so that your little yo-yos can cover up those edges there. But both pillows are really, really cute and they'll make you a great gift. I hope you enjoyed this video. Now for other fall projects, check below your YouTube screen for those video links. And if you're interested in other beginner sewing projects, there'll be some links down there for that also. Now don't forget to follow me on Instagram and make sure you check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time and happy sewing. If you like the Sewing Room channel, one of the best ways to show your support is to subscribe by clicking on that red subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And make sure you click on the bell so you receive notifications for all my new videos. I'm Cheryl, this is Manny. See you next time.